cannot get the hatch electrically open on the, uh, on my car. So it's a pretty straightforward uh, circuit. Here. How does it actually work? So a ground, you hit, when you hit the switch, a ground is applied through the switch itself, of course, to the body control module. The circuitry in the body control module simply puts a ground on the relay. The relay actuates, it's in the actuated position now, and actually puts 12 volts to the actuator to unlock the door. And when that happens, of course, the, the switch will sense it's unlocked and bring on the indication on the instrument panel. That's basically what the micro switch itself looks like. There's two different configurations of the micro switch depending on whether you have keyless entry uh, on the vehicle or not. Um, mine does not, so it doesn't have the secondary micro switch um, that's shown on the drawing. And this is the lat latch actuator itself. I think probably it's the door switch itself, the push button door switch itself, possibly the actuator itself, either electrically or mechanically. It's actually binding, that's a possibility. The, the mechanism is actually. The car is 10 years old now, so it's quite possible the, the corrosion is actually starting to be, get the better. The mechanism is starting to bind up. That's a possibility. I'll consider that. Uh, the body control module itself has possibly failed, but I highly doubt that because all the other functions on the uh, in the car seem to be fine. Although there is a relay which is specific to the, uh, to the rear door latch actuation function. That's a possibility. Uh, power and ground or a wiring issue, of course, is always uh, a possibility. A fuse is gone. Um, there's usually a reason a fuse is gone if it is, in fact, gone. But again, corrosion could be an issue with respect to the grounds. And um, there's always a possibility of something unforeseen. As I said, I think it's probably the switch, but I try to remind myself not to uh, suffer for confirmation bias and uh, keep my mind open to all the likely possibilities. Still a wee bit nippy in the garage. And... Uh Try and make this brief <laughs> that'd be a first for me i know uh so here i am i've got the uh the panel uh the rear interior panel is actually removed so i can get a look at what's actually happening so uh this is actually the uh unlock switch itself we're looking at the back side in the harness so it's just a loop it just uh, simply jumps the uh, the two pins of course when you push the push button although i suspect not in this case because the switch seems to be inoperative and this is the latch actuator itself and uh as i mentioned uh in in uh inside the uh, the latch actuator itself is actually the position micro switch it's the switch that actually brings on the uh the warning on the instrument cluster again not to be confused with the switch that actually actuates the uh, the uh, that unlocks the the request to unlock the uh, the the door in the first place Okay, so um, I'm, I'm always looking for the, the quick and efficient way um, in order to troubleshoot something. And it seems to me the simplest way, because this is a straightforward connector, it's actually the wire is onto itself. That is to say it's simply a loop that when you push the push button switch, it actually mates in this connector, the male and female connector, of course. So those two pins there, Hope you can see them. I'll try and get sorry, try and get the lighting just right. Those are two pins there. So it's simply a matter of jumping those two pins there, and uh, that should that should uh, put the request to the body control module. Body control module's internal relay should uh, energize and uh, put the power to the to the actual solenoid itself, as we discussed on the on the schematic. So, in the interest of expediency, uh, let's do that right now. So, there's not going to be any fancy tools involved here because this, <laughs> let me get it in frame, Jesus, jumping, what is it? There, uh, is going to be my shorting uh, strap. There's absolutely no chance that I'm going to, uh, that I'm going to uh, um, damage anything here. I'm not going to short anything in the ground. Those two pins are simply jumped by the uh, switch. So I'm comfortable just putting a screwdriver across the two uh, the two pins. No, no, I get it. It doesn't look as fancy as me getting up my jump kit and you know jumping the pins and making it look good for the sake of a YouTube video. But I don't really see the point. There is absolutely there's no hazard and there's no uh, potential damage to the system that I'm going to put my screwdriver across this and that's going to be it. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> so camera in one hand. Whoop! There goes my light. There we go. Uh, Camera in one hand, tool in the other. Listen for the latch. Whoop. 
whoops, and uh, <laughs> a little bit overzealous to get things done here. I actually took the connector off the uh, the solenoid because I was unsure of what the story was. I had just isolated the switch in the uh, in the solenoid, and so that uh, I didn't have any issues overnight when I'm draining the battery and the vent was short or something like that. So let's try and connect everything up this time. Now we've got the power to the actuator. Let's try that again. Okay. So across the two pins, and I think you can hear the actuator there. So it does in fact look like it's the switch, right? There's the actuator. It looks like it's moving smoothly, so it doesn't appear to be any issue with the actuator. So, so in order to remove the, uh, the micro switch assembly, you have to actually take off the facial plate. And there's actually four studs, four studs that actually uh, secure this plate itself. On the underside of that, the micro switch is actually mounted to that. So we'll do that right now. So there's two screws that hold the, uh, the little plastic frame. That should pop out. It does. And two screws that hold the micro switch itself. There's a switch assembly and the attached hardware, two screws. As I said, two screws that actually mount right here to hold this little frame. Obviously you can't tell on camera because the switch itself actually looks fine. And there's no point in me ringing this out. I'd show you the, uh, the continuity check on the switch. Uh, but it did work from time to time, but it just got progressively worse and worse and worse to the point where it may open one out of 10 times. Well, who wants that? You want your trunk to open every time last time i checked right so the switch itself actually feels funny it feels stiff it feels it just doesn't feel right like it's actuating inside the switch assembly itself um you can pop the little plastic frame and actually pop out the micro switch itself i've done that in the past <laughs> and i have no intention of doing that again just fix it fix it right and through the magic of editing look voila all of a sudden uh a new switch for Suzuki is actually showing up. Um, see if I can get the lighting on this a wee bit better. So there's the part number. Again, there's two different styles of these switches. This is for the non-keyless entry type car. Now, that terminology is a wee bit weird when it comes to the SX4 because I can get into my car without the key. I just use the fob. So be clear on the, on the terminology. Suzuki is referring to keyless entry uh, that's the style of car that you do not require your key and the ignition switch. I've got one of each version. Um, the car I'm working on here is the one that does require the key and the ignition. So this is considered the non-keyless entry switch. Okay, and here's the original. This is a Suzuki part number. And I don't know if you can see on the box, Suzuki Motor Corporation. Look at that. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, reassembly, of course, is just the re re reverse of the disassembly. But if you look really close, you're probably not going to be able to see it on the camera. But actually, um, one of the standoffs here that is molded into the plastic uh, frame here, one of them is actually circular and one of them is actually rectangular. So when you go to install this switch, it's actually keyed. It can only be put on in one direction. I'll speed this up so I'll not bore you. Okay, I'll put it back on the car. That's it. Uh, it's sub-assembled, shall we say. 
everything uh, back on the car. Just feed the uh, careful feeding the wire harness, position the grommet in the uh, the skin of the uh, the door itself, and the four studs, of course, through the uh, corresponding holes. Okay, so grommets in place. Everything's in place. Everything's secured. I hand tightened uh, everything up. Uh, just so I don't over torque it with the electric uh, ratchet. Uh, connector, of course, back on its female companion there. Actuator, everything's hooked back up. Oh. Ah, lovely. Right, nice. So just the, uh, I'll just of course make sure everything's all right. Double eyeball everything, make sure there's a, there's no grief that I should be paying attention to. Uh, put the, uh, the trim panel back on. No point in showing you that. That's simple, straightforward. And uh, yeah, that's it. So in this instance, it was just the, uh, just the micro switch. Okay, just uh, a closing note here um, before uh, before I sign off. Uh, there is two conduits, two flexible conduits that actually come up uh, from the from the body structure itself, and as you can see, they articulate as the hatch actually opens. Now, as I think probably most people know. Uh, any portion of wiring that tends to flex over time can actually give you grief. And if I did have any trouble uh, beyond just the micro switch, that would have been one of the first places I would have actually looked because, um, uh, as I said, it only makes sense that over time, uh, that harness is only going to flex so many times before it's going to be grief. Uh, fortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case at the moment and uh, everything seems to be operative. Trim panels all back on, as I said, and uh, yeah. Happy can actually get in my, my hatch again. I insisted on calling the trunk uh, about a thousand times in the previous video. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Cheers.